Thanks for coming, everybody. Um, so my talk is titled Liberating Your Application from Framework Tyranny, uh, which is a really long title that says everything about my talk and nothing. Um, and so I'd like to dive in with maybe like a, a subtext, a subtitle, um, and this is it right here. Every time you pick a framework, you will eventually be wrong <laughs> and need to migrate. So every single framework you look at is wrong. Eventually, that doesn't mean it's wrong in the moment. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about why that is. Um, there was no way to know in 2012 that Angular was going to be a massive rewrite of AngularJS, and it would be a difficult thing to migrate to. Let me back up, I'm seeing like people just staring. Um, there's no way to know that your favorite framework that you have in production right now today could disappear tomorrow. Many of these frameworks are sponsored by large companies that could pull funding. They could, it's a group of people who say, you know what, I'm kind of done, and no one could pick up the charge. So we could end up in a situation where the framework we've chosen is, is, is gone. Uh, and that's a big problem because frameworks require full adoption. When you select a framework, you're, you're, grabbing, a, you're grabbing and doing everything the framework way. You select Angular, you're doing it the Angular way. That might include TypeScript, um, that might not. There's, there's some flexibility there. And something we often don't talk about is that frameworks influence hiring processes. If you're in a, a React shop, you're looking for people who have a familiarity with React. And you'll hire outside that and train them. But ultimately, what framework you choose affects everything about your, your application, your hiring processes, and your future potential. So eventually, um, you're going to get into a migration scenario. Um, and I don't know, show of hands, who's dealt with the migration? Whether it's uh, Angular to React, probably, that was really common. Angular to, or I guess Angular JS to Angular. There's a handful, okay. Uh, and so you, there, are, there are a lot of options for migration. Um, the two that I th I've heard the most are sort of the Big Bang rewrite. Uh, you turn to your product manager and you say, hey, no new features, uh, we're gonna take six, eight, 12 months, and we're gonna rebuild everything the same way. We'll introduce a few new bugs along the way, maybe get rid of some old ones. And product managers love that. That is absolutely their favorite thing. Um, and it, honestly, it's not that much fun as an engineer uh, to just rewrite everything exactly the same. Um, so another option that's sort of considered the more conservative option is adapters. Um, and I, I don't know if, uh, who's used an adapter to upgrade before? The promise of an adapter is, is pretty sweet, right? It's like, hey, you're gonna just add this ng, uh, ng React or Angular to React adapter, and bonus, you now get to write React, you have Angular code, everything's great. Um, and then over time, you stop writing Angular code and start migrating all the old stuff to React, and, every, and everyone's happy, and you end up with no Angular in production. Um, I've actually never seen that work. Uh, usually what happens, and I can, um, I'm not going to sh shame companies, but there's a company I know of that had a backbone application in production, and they used a backbone adapter to bring Angular into their application. And that was great, and they went with that for years. Um, and at some parts of their application, it went back and forth from Angular to backbone to Angular to backbone seven or eight times, components rendering each other. Um, until one day they went, oh man, you know, Angular just isn't meeting our performance needs. We need framework Y. And they were looking to migrate to React, but they're in this terrible situation. They're in the middle of a migration, and they've been in that migration period for years. Um, no, now they're right back to the Big Bang. Got a, all right, product, you know, you said we couldn't do it before, but we can do it now, right? <laughs> um, and so there's, there's, a, there's an option that a lot of people aren't aware of uh, that we used at Canopy when we were confronted with this same sort of an issue. Um, and that's uh, adopting a microservices in the front end approach. Um, so this talk is gonna jump into that. Um, there's a lot of cons with microservices uh, and there's cons with monolithic applications. Um, so it's important to know that up front, this isn't gonna solve all the world's problems, um, but it's gonna solve a lot of them. And it's, an app, uh, it's a meta application called SingleSpa. 
Um, or it's a, you can build an app, uh, it's a JavaScript framework for front end microservices is another way to talk about it. Um, we're gonna focus a little bit on migration, but all of this is possible starting from scratch. So when you get tired of your current job and come work at Canopy, we, we have a spot for you. So um, high level, um, single spa uh, allows you to break your application up into microservices. So you have a, a legacy Angular application. Let's break it up into chunks. Let's say you have a CRM module and a billing module. Uh, let's break them into two separate chunks, sort of like code splitting, only uh, earlier in the process. And then we'll migrate those individual chunks, sort of like a, a small bang approach rather than a big bang approach. Um, and you can do that over time. You could still use adapters if that fits your needs. Um, and so you can think of your application broken up into these chunks. You have your single spot applications and you have your single spot config. A configuration is actually a really small file uh, and single spa is designed to be flexible. Um, it's promise based. Um, it treats uh, applications just like a framework treats components. Uh, there, you can have multiple applications on the same page. You can have one application. Applications can be big or small. Flexibility is very important. It's, it's pretty unopinionated. Um, and so your single spot config is going to register applications. Hey, I, I need a CRM application. Um, I provide it the application and I tell single spot when it should be on the page. Now this function right here always returns true. Uh, it is invoked with the window.location so you can, you can treat single spot like a top level router. Um, so single spot is now owning your application but you can have lots of different modules interacting underneath. Um, let's take a look at what an application actually has to, has to do. Um, so this is the app, uh, application. This is really all you have to add to your React application to make it work in single spot, this, this right here. Um, so you have, we have a couple helper libraries that help you make it work promise-based. Um, ultimately, what we're doing in React is react-dom.render. Uh, React-dom.render, sorry, <clears throat> react-dom.render has a callback that allows us to hook in and say, oh, you've finished rendering. You've finished mounting the application. So a single spot works by ha having a common API in each uh, application. Common lifecycle methods. You have a bootstrap, a mount, and an unmount. So whenever an application needs to go to the DOM, it's bootstrapped if it, or if it hasn't been mounted yet. And that can be like initialization logic. Let's say you need to fetch data or a feature toggle. Um, then we run the bootstrap lifecycle, um, I'm sorry, bootstrap, then mount, and then when it needs to be taken off the DOM, we run unmount. And in React, that's just react DOM dot unmount component at node. Um, and we have these helper libraries. This entire project is open source. Um, so let's look at what an application has to do. Um, you're gonna provide React so that we can call react DOM dot render for you to this single spa React helper file. Uh, you'll give react DOM um, and we'll also give us the root component. And we'll mount that, and from there, it's all your component. We don't, we don't touch it at all. So you can have routing inside there, you can render a React router, um, and we'll prevent events from firing to you if your React router, if it's not mounted. Um, so like I said, it's promise-based. Each of these functions returns a promise. Um, and that's really high level, so let's, let's look at our actual application. This is our integration environment. So I'm gonna get rid of that. So here is um, can, one of the pages of Canopy's application. Uh, this one's kind of interesting. We have a, a dashboard widget, a dashboard here with some widgets. Um, let's see, let's jump over to like contacts. And this is our integration environment, so this is all fake data. So how many applications are on the page right now? Anyone wanna take a guess? except for the people that work at Canopy. I saw you raise your hand. There's actually a couple. Um, and to the end user, it's invisible. So there's, there's the primary navigation and the contacts, the CRM. So primary navigation is an application unto itself. It's built in React, um, and contacts is actually also built in React. But if I jump over here, primary navigation is still on the page, and a different application is on the page. So it can function like a portal where they're not speaking to each other. Or we have a, a calendar in here, which is really pretty. Uh, you can jump over here. This is inside primary nav bar. I want to create a calendar event so they can communicate to each other by calling into the JavaScript modules. 
Now, you could, you could use JavaScript modules. You could use an event emitter. It's, it's very flexible. Um, let me jump a little bit ahead. Sorry about that. Couldn't figure out how to get the uh, speaker's present slides, uh, the uh, presentation slides to work, so doing it old school. Now, we also just launched a new, a new uh, website with documentation and examples. Uh, take a look at that. So this is our single spot app, our website. We have an introductory video, which is where I got some of the animations from for this and the theming. Uh, we have documentation here. We jump through. We'll walk you through starting from scratch or migrating. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually, we're really proud of this. We just launched this uh, a couple months ago. It has uh, really helped with adoption of Single Spa, and it's made it easier for us maintaining the project where it's fewer questions. So it's a, it's a metric of a, of a good documentation, I think. Um, and then let's jump back over here. So I'd like to revise my earlier statement. Unless your application is designed to be flexible, your framework will eventually be wrong. So this statement becomes this statement. Um, and that's everything. That's single spot, it's a high level introduction. Uh, I've got some information there. You can follow me on GitHub and Twitter. Um, it's entirely open source. Thank you. <laughs>